Over the past 10 years, business consultant Mark Kibi has helped over 100 companies recover from financial distress. An expert in cash flow forecasting, strategic planning, and crisis management, he offers a unique hands-on perspective for stabilizing a struggling business and getting it back on the path to profitability. Mark stopped by the Aileron campus to offer some timely advice for the challenges business owners face in the midst of a recession. In this segment, you'll hear his thoughts on making the most of your limited resources. Thank you. Thank you all for coming here as well. Good afternoon. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Dan, I did notice one thing when I was here the last time. In the men's room, there's a little basket at the sink that's filled with, uh, last time I was here, it was filled with about half antacid tablets and half uh, uh, aspirin tablets. I noticed today when I was in there, there was one antacid tablet in there. Um, I'm guessing that's a sign of certainly an indicator of the times. Uh, it is very stressful out there, and uh, there's a lot going on. You really do. Things are changing, as Sonny mentioned, and we really do need to pay attention to what's going on. So what we want to talk about today uh, is how to take care of your business. It needs to be taken care of. Things are different, and we want to try to give you some ideas and maybe give you some concepts you hadn't maybe really thought about. Uh, to, to help you take care of your business. Okay, let's start with a very basic lesson. You all have come from very diverse companies and backgrounds. So to start with, I want to get an understanding of uh, what's your most important asset. Now, if you've read the slides and the outlines in the book, you're not allowed to answer this. But if I could get some opinions from the different businesses that are out there of what you think your most important asset, what you would consider your most important asset. People? People? Employees. Okay. Cash. Cash. Customers. Customers. Processes, products, equipment. All very, all very good answers. However, I would argue there's one answer. And it's cash. Everything we do is for the purpose of increasing cash. It's not a bad thing. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a dirty word. It's what we do. It's why you all are in business to generate cash. It's why you have good people. It's why you have good processes. It's why you have good customers. You have good vendors. Pretty much, if cash is our most important asset, we need to understand a few things before we spend any money before we do spend any time on anything within the business, and before any decisions made, we need to answer one question. That's really, that's really all we want to know. If we're spending time on something or spending money on something that doesn't bring in cash, why are we doing it? OK, let's take lesson number two. If cash is our most important asset, how much will you have in, in 12 weeks? How many people here know where their cash is going to be in 12 weeks or have an idea? It's more than I would expect. Is it going to be up or down? Okay. Okay. You're, you're on the right track if you, if you have an idea of where it is because you can predict your cash. There are major components. The difficult part is there are a lot of components that affect cash, but you can predict them. That can be done. So let's talk about the components that impact cash, impact cash flow. Billings, obviously that has a major impact because that's going to impact future cash. Payroll, material costs certainly has a major impact. Operating costs, inventory, and capital expenditures. All of these will have an impact, as you know, on your, on your cash flow. Let's talk about billings. How do you predict billings? Very difficult in this time frame, but if you don't take the time to at least have an idea of where you think things are going to be, you have no expectation as to whether it's going to be good or bad. So you can look at current backlog, which should give you, if you can do that accurately, that will give you an indicator probably for your next eight weeks of where cash is going to be. Um, you know what you're billing today, which means you're probably going to collect that sometime in the next four to eight weeks out. If you have a four-week backlog, that could put you at 12 weeks of incoming cash. 
And you can look at historical sales. May or may not be relevant uh, currently, but uh, it certainly is a, is a starting point. The point being, you, you at least got to take a stab at it. Payroll. Two different groups. Now, these are the traditional groups of, of payroll that everybody's used to. I'd like to deviate before we talk about kind of, kind of the nuts and bolts of it. I would, and Sonny touched on this with the management, I'd like to give you some uh, alternatives for classifying your employees. And if you think of them in this respect, it might give you a little bit different perspective versus keeping it to pure numbers. You've got eagles in your company. Those are your top performers. Those are the people that, think, that currently think like the owner. They understand that their job is to make money, pure and simple. And if anything gets in that way to do, of doing their job of making the company money, they have a problem with it. They get it, that these are your star players. You have your ducks. They're your solid workers. They're the ones that execute. They're dependable. They're reliable. And hopefully, we can take these ducks and make them eagles. We can, we can bring them up, but we, we need ducks in our organization to, to execute the tasks and to move, to move the company forward. We got the turkeys, and we all have them, every one of them. These are the people that just don't get it, but we need the bodies. Got to have them. We got to get the work out the door. We need the bodies. I would argue we don't. A lot of people will spend a lot of time with turkeys, supervising them, trying to bring them up to make them a duck. I would argue that's a waste of time. Make your ducks eagles. I mean, why, why wouldn't I spend time on a turkey? I can tell you. First of all, you're not getting anything from that employee. No productivity at all. On top of that, people have to cover from them. This person's always sick. They're never here. They're always doing things wrong. They're, they're screwing up. Somebody has to cover for them. Uh, so other people are are covering from there. So they're actually taking away productivity. You'd be surprised the number of clients I have that when they cut their labor force down because they have to, their productivity goes up because they've identified the turkeys and they've gotten rid of them. And probably the most important thing is when you have a turkey here, you're sending the message that under certain circumstances, poor performance is acceptable to this company. It's okay to have subpar performers. You're sending a very, very bad message to your top people by tolerating subpar performance. Mark, could, could you help out um, the, the folks to understand what sort of discussions you have with a business owner when the business is in distress about these turkeys, how you handle them, and really what time frame that you're looking at? What we want to do is we talked about the 12-week window of, project, of looking at our cash. And let's say we look at our cash and it's going to be a half a million dollars light in 12, 12 weeks. Well, first of all, you probably want to know that now, not 11 weeks from now. So one of the components is we've got to cut employees. Well, how do we do this? You know, well, okay, we've identified some people, and I think, you know, these are, these are our turkeys, as, as you've suggested, and we'll get rid of our poor performers, and, you know, the first of next month, we're going to make the layoffs. You know, we're going to make, you've identified them, you're bleeding cash, you're going to make them this afternoon. Why do you want to pay these people more? It's a very difficult, it's probably the most emotional decision they can make is laying off people. I mean, you all, I'm sure, have all been there or, or have considered being there. You have to lay off people. No matter how poor performing a person is, it's difficult, it's difficult to cut somebody out of the company. It's difficult to lay off people, but they're costing you a lot of money. And when you see that impact on cash, to answer your question, Dan, when you see that it's costing you money not to make this decision, that you're funding, Funding this poor performance, it tends to push them, push them over. When, they're when your home is at risk, your net worth is at risk, your personal guarantees are at risk, you tend to say, you know what, enough's enough. 